Hello and welcome to the FA Women's National League show, the weekly show where we look at everything that has happened over the past week and what we can look forward to over the next seven days in the third and fourth tiers of the Women's National League. And a brief look below as well when the FA Cup rolls around. My name is Chris Gansby. I'm here every Tuesday at 6pm bringing you all of the very latest and we have an action-packed show for you this week. On today's show, I speak to Sam Griffiths, the Derby County head coach, about her October Manager of the Month award. And after some huge shocks in the Women's FA Cup, I speak to Mike Harris, the head coach of Stourbridge, after they claim yet another higher division opponent scalp. And to Sophia Axelson of Clapham Community, as they become a seventh tier side to reach the third round of the Women's FA Cup. All of that is to come, but as always, we're going to start with the league fixtures that happened this weekend. As you can imagine, and as you will have seen uh, over social media, a lot of games called off uh, because of the snow, some games abandoned as well. And because it was the second round of the Women's FA Cup, it was a shortened program to begin with. So we're going to skip over the Northern Division as the game between Middlesbrough and Derby was postponed. So there's been no changes uh, to anything in the North. Uh, so we'll move straight into the Southern where there was only one game. Keemsham Town against Milton Keynes Dons. Uh, two goals for Kerry Bartlett for Keensham Town, including one in the 90th minute, uh, gave them the three points against Milton Keynes Dons, who haven't got their lineup on the FA Women's National League website as of yet. Uh, but a three points for Keensham Town, which uh, lifted them up a uh, couple of places. In the table, they are now sit there in the middle of the table. 15 points, but still with that minus 35 goal difference. Uh, and Milton Keynes Dons there remain on penultimate place in the table. Again, a reminder, Cardiff City there docked a point for not fulfilling a fixture while they had COVID in their camp. Hence the asterisk uh, next to their score. We will move swiftly on then. As I said, we do have plenty to talk about and there is uh, not much in the way of league action. We'll go to the Division 1 Midlands uh, where we had abandonments, postponements, but one game did complete. So, uh, Biddeth United against Leek Town abandoned 20 minutes in because of the snow with the score at 0-0. Nil -nil. Uh, Bowman St. Michael's and Peterborough United, they got further through their game, abandoned in the 70th minute because of the snow. Uh, Bowman St. Michael 4-2 up at the time uh, when that game was halted. Howell Sports 3, Doncaster Rovers 4, great game there that did actually get completed. Uh, goals for Howell Sports, Katie Connor, uh, Alexa Passingham and Chantel Amber Robertson. But two goals for Hannah McWilliams, one for Phoebe Snedden and one for substitute Jessica Price was enough to give uh, Doncaster Rovers Bells all three points in that one. Sporting Cowser against Solihull Moors postponed. What that means for the table with three points for Doncaster Rovers Bells is that they climb one place above Boldmere St. Michael's into second in the table. They're now two points behind Lincoln City, but Lincoln City do still have that game in hand. Uh, the defeat for Howell Sports just leaves them there in the middle of the table. But as you can see from the games played, Solihull Moors have two games in hand on them. Leaford Athletic have four and Peterborough United have three. So... Uh, uh, Howell Sports could find themselves falling further down the table. Burton Albion there in the penultimate place as well have a game in hand. They could win that and go above Howell Sports. So uh, it's a dangerous time for those from Howell at the moment. Uh, again, in Division 1 North, everything was uh, postponed. So not going to cover that as there's been no changes uh, since last week's show. So we'll move to Division 1 South East. Two games in this one. Cambridge United nil, London Seaward 2. Uh, goals for Joanna Butler-Williams and Abby Dell giving London Seaward a 2-0 victory there against Cambridge. And Harlow Town narrowly beating Enfield Town. Uh, a third minute opener for Georgia Box for Harlow. They went 2-0 up thanks to Chloe Bassett just after the half hour mark. K 
Katie O'Leary, just before half time, uh, pulled it back to one goal, but that was it. In terms of scoring, no goals in the second half, and Harlow Town take the three points. So three points for London Seaward and for Harlow Town actually means there's no movement in the table at all. All that's happened is London Seaward have now pulled level with AFC Wimbledon. They're in sixth place. And Harlow Town have pulled level with a group of teams on seven points towards the bottom of the table. But because of the goal differences involved, there's actually been no movement in the Division 1 South East. Finally then for league action, Division 1 South West, a couple of games managed to get played here. Porter Z 1, Larkwell Athletic 1. Uh, goals there uh, for Kiana Jones in the eighth minute for Portishead. Uh, Larkwell Athletic equalising thanks to Grace Eagles in the 27th minute to give them a draw. And a convincing victory for Swindon Town over Paul Town. Four goals for Ellie Olds. 11th, 33rd, 75th and 86th minute uh, for Ellie Olds. Uh, Sophie Mitchell in the 53rd minute. Uh, the substitute having come on in the 21st minute. Uh, got a goal as well. And then Megan Attenborough rounding the scoring off in the fourth minute of added time at the end of the game to make it 6-1. The lone goal for Paul Town coming from Emma Accott uh, in the 65th minute. The victory for Swindon then has meant they've climbed uh, a couple of places above Larkle and Maidenhead. They now sit five up from the bottom. Uh, Pool Town remain at the bottom of the table. The point for Portishead and for Larkle Athletic does nothing really to change where they are in the standings. So that is everything that has happened in the domestic side. Uh, sorry, in the yeah, in the league action uh, for. This week from the FA Women's National League, third and fourth tiers. Uh, so now we're going to have our first interview of this show. I spoke to Sam Griffiths, the head coach of Derby County Women, after her October Manager of the Month award. Uh, just note on this one that Sam, unfortunately, at the moment is self-isolating uh, with COVID. Uh, so was wearing uh, a mask to protect her son at the uh, time of this recording. So we have decided to make it um, audio only. The sound is still good. Uh, but here is Sam Griffiths, who spoke to me, first of all, about how satisfying it was to come away with all three points from the uh, city ground in Nottingham in front of four and a half thousand people. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I don't want to say that was kind of the turning point for us, but I think historically, um, as a manager, um, we've always kind of struggled against Forest. Um, <clears throat> we always seem to play play either at Pride Park or um, at, at kind of their place. So it's always quite a big occasion. Um, and we always talk about playing the game and not the occasion. And that was, um, like I say, a big a big game for us um, of kind of which way that one was probably going to go. So to go there, um, kind of not concede um, and take the three points was um, probably the start of, uh, of this journey, to be honest. It seems to be one of those games, saving the penalty in, in the first half and then getting the first goal and then the terrific free kick for the second goal as well. Just everything seemed to click for you that day. Yeah, I think I think the game swung kind of both ways um, in the first um, first sort of 20, 30 minutes. Um, but I think we, we'd, we'd got a game plan. I think we, we knew sort of the way that we wanted to play. We knew the way that we wanted to approach the game. Um, and look, it's always hard playing at places like that. The pitch dimensionally might not be much bigger than kind of what 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 we play on, but I think visually it it looks a lot bigger. So there was a lot of sort of mental prep that we had to do for that game as well. Um, and the biggest thing as well that, that people forget is when you count quite loud on the sides, um, when you play in environments like that, you have to trust the players because we literally could not get one message onto yeah. the pitch. It's, it's a real different atmosphere and a real different challenge from being stood on the side at Mickleover. It was a terrific afternoon. I know they ran out of clappers for the fans as well. So it was it was one of those days where it was just so loud and brilliant to get four and a half thousand people in. I mean, you talk about that being a changing point. I mean, that was game three of six in a row where you didn't concede a goal. I mean, that's really been a, a key point for our October as well. Four wins and a draw, 13 scored, one goal conceded. Yeah, um, we knew that conceding goals was a problem last season. Um, we knew we conceded far more than, than than we wanted. So 
it's something that we were kind of conscious of this season that, that we wanted to kind of stop. I think we've always put trust in that, that we can score the goals. It's just it's probably just stopping them at the other end. So we probably worked a lot defensively this year on our shape and just going back to some real basic technical 1v1 defending, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's nice to, to be able to have them stats. And then at the other end, say 13 goals conceded. You've got the league's top scorer in Ellie Gilead as well, which is obviously a huge asset for you. Yeah, look, Al, Al came to us um, a couple of seasons ago, played all her career at sort of left back and just wanted a totally new challenge and really wanted to challenge herself. She's probably one of the most driven people I've ever I've played with her, I've played against her, and now I've got the joy of managing her. Um, so yeah, I can't fault her determination. She, she'd be the first one to admit she's probably not a natural goal scorer, um, but she's worked hard this season at scoring goals and getting into the right areas and everything else. And yeah, she's been rewarded with, um, with being top goal scorer. And you've kept that going through November as well. Currently top of the league, two points clear of Wolves. They do have a game in hand, but yeah. with so many uh, League Cup, League Play, FA Cup, County Cup, it's we've, it's been a long time since league fixtures have been played. And it's the one that uh, this weekend got called off as well because of the snow. Yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Obviously, with us getting knocked out the, the FA Cup, which was a bit of a disappointment, um, that's ended up rearranging um, stuff. Um, I've literally just found out this morning that we now play filed at home Sunday, which is a massive okay. for us, um, which is not great for me because, obviously, I'm struggling with COVID at the minute, so I won't be around training um, all week. So I'll have to put the trust in, in the staff and everything else. Um, for the for so I can just see my little boy. Just no, sitting. don't worry. Um. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. What happens this week, and see how many others go down with COVID and all sorts. Just had somebody um texting about ten minutes ago saying they've got to now self isolate. So just a nightmare. Yeah, it's one of the things with this season, isn't it? That we you never yeah. know who's going to be available week no. to week. No. Not that for any fault of anybody's own, but just general no. work and what have you, and then they're just yeah. not available. Yeah, I mean, it's not just that, it's affecting training. So we've just had a conversation 10 minutes ago about we, we, we have got a few people down with it. We do know there's a few people probably going to come training that have had contact, but they don't have to isolate because they're double vaccinated. So we've kind of just changed our plans because we usually do gym, we do some individual indoor stuff, and we've literally gone, you know, this week we're literally going to be outdoors, like nothing else mm. other than outdoors, which goes against some of our prep stuff. But at the end of the day, we've got to keep the players and staff as safe as possible at the minute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned there briefly about your your playing career now, your your managing career. How did you first get into into women's football? Um, well, obviously, I played. I played from I played from being little, really, sort of four or five. Um, always played with boys. Um, there, there wasn't the opportunities when I was sort of younger to play in sort of girls' team. So played majority with boys, um, and then I was playing senior football from fourteen. Um, so that was pretty much my kind of playing um I had a few few seasons at different clubs um ended up kind of at, at Derby where I had nine really enjoyable seasons where I captained the team um and then unfortunately the Mace you know, uh, what five years ago now had kind of a year out um trying to rehab trying to get back playing but it was just not going to happen so I decided to hang the boots up um I've worked for the football association for the past 13 years so I've always been into football I'd already done my coaching badges um, I'd already got my A license sort of when I retired. Um, so the na- the next natural thing was me to step into the into the managerial shoes, which the the chairperson at the time asked me to do, which was a yeah, which was a challenge at the start at the start. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Do you find that it helps you having been a player as well? You can understand the players' mindset when you when you're coaching them. Um, I think there's I think there's fours and against, to be honest. I think there's some stuff that helps you because you can relate to it. And there's some stuff that doesn't help because um, you almost put yourself in there mm. and, and, and and it becomes quite a bias of, well, that's what I would do. That's what I think. But I had to learn that very quickly that just because of the way I played, the way I thought, the way I felt, didn't necessarily mean that that was the right way for sort of those to feel as well. Um so yeah, that that was a big challenge, and 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 learning to manage people, manage emotions, and things like that. The coaching is totally different. Coaching and managing yeah. two totally different things. 
So when you're when you're playing, you're, you're concentrating kind of entirely on yourself, and now now you're managing. You've got an entire squad and backroom staff that you kind of got to keep your eye on. Yeah, yeah, and it is it, it is it is that it's you, you're not just managing players, you're managing staff. You you are you are responsible. You are responsible for the wins, the losses, um, and everything else. But I'd like to think that I've got a good team around me that are very supportive. Um, and yeah, like I say, we're we're in a good place at the minute. Yeah, and looking ahead to, to December then, you've got, as you said, filed uh, this weekend, then, then a game against Hull uh, and then Brighouse in the, in the Cup for, for December at the moment. You mentioned, of course, that you, you now found out you're playing filed, things changed. That brings its own challenge where, you know, it almost comes about that two teams are available, so you, you kind of slot the fixture in, so to speak. Yeah, and I think that's what we were kind of waiting on. I think we knew when... Um, Brighouse, obviously their game got cancelled Sunday. We knew that had be then rolled over to sort of this week, which uh, well, then freed us up. And I was trying to work out who else would be free in the league. Um, and yeah, when file popped up, it probably couldn't be a bigger game, to be honest. Mm, it's going to be a, a challenging one for you, particularly as uh, the games have been called off. So you're not coming off it fresh off a, a run and another game. It's been a couple of weeks without a game. And as you said, the training is more difficult as well. So it will be a tough game. Yeah, and I think look, we 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 just have to deal with that. It's it's not ideal. It's not ideal prep. The situation we're in this week is probably not ideal. With myself not being around and having a couple of players isolating as well. But at the end of the day, unfortunately, that's the world we live in now. And it, yeah. look, it gives it gives other players opportunities, which is what it's about as well. So, yeah, we'll we'll give it our best Sunday and see what happens. Uh, and and just finally, I know you said there you've been involved with with the FA and in women's football for for a long, long time now. It's clear that it is moving in the right direction. The, the awareness is improving there. How can the leagues that the FA Women's National League, the, the Super League Championship and women's football as a whole continue to grow and, and what improvements can further be made? Um, I think it's growing. I think I think it's getting there. Um I think the fan bases are obviously they're going up. I think marketing's a huge, huge thing. Um, hopefully the women's Euros again um, mm. in, in June will 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 boost numbers, will boost people's kind of appetites for the game. Um, and I just I just think it's the exposure side. Um, I think the more people that are exposed to it, um, uh, the, the better really. Um, Will it ever be as big as a men's game? I, I don't know. I, I don't think it will, but I think it's it's got its its own rights because it's it's our own it's our own sort of game. Um, so I think there's a huge amount of work, especially like I say when I see internally what goes on at the FA to, to kind of promote women's football and, and the stuff that kind of goes on. And I think young girls growing up now can actually see that there can actually be a career, a pathway, and 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 they've got some of those uh, unbelievable role models to look up to. Yeah, I know there was a there was a large uptake after the last Women's World Cup, so hopefully after the Euros as well, we'll have a, another big uptake. And I know that the, the quality is getting better as, as the Super League and the Championship improves and those players start to filter down. It is noticeable, the, the difference in the quality in, in the third and fourth tiers now. Yeah, like it's the, the whole thing's just getting better and better. Like you say, I think there's a massive knock-on effect to... Um, foreign players coming in at the top level, which then probably drops maybe a few English players down a level, which then drops a few more of those down back to our level. Um, and there's probably more sort of championship players playing at our level than I've seen in, in quite a long time that have either chose to drop down because of commitments or for whatever reason just want game time. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's it, 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 it's getting stronger all the time. And th this is probably... This season's probably been the most competitive league, this league that I've kind of been involved with. I think previously before this season, there's probably always been like a runaway. If it be mm. Blackburns, your Sunderlands, there's always been a table topper that you probably looked at and you thought we're never going to catch. Whereas this season, everybody's dropped a point. Um, yeah. so it keeps it really exciting and, and really open. Yeah, I know we've we had that in previous years, haven't we? Where you get a team that may only like lose one game all season, and you're there. Yeah. Even at this point, you're like, well, I've got to win every single game between now and the end of the season just to stand a chance. Now, yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely it is a very exciting season, particularly say if Wolves win their game in hand, they go back one point clear. There's teams with games in hand. It should keep it exciting right down to the wire. 
Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd rather it not be exciting. I'd rather be <laughs> steaming ahead, but don't think that's going to be the case. Um, so, yeah, we'll just keep doing what uh, what we can do and see where we are at the end of the season. And fingers crossed that um, this season actually gets completed because I've been in this role for my fourth season and I've only completed one. So just to complete a season would be nice. A big thank you to Sam for taking the time out to talk to me there, particularly given the current situation for her. Uh, Derby have got uh, filed this weekend, as she mentioned, in that uh, they will go through all of the fixtures later on in the show. But for now, let's have a look at the Women's FA Cup results, because my, my, there were some fantastic ones here. We'll look at the draw later on as well. Uh, As you can imagine, a lot of postponements, a couple of abandonments as well. I've got notes on those. Uh, So we'll start then. Uh, Norton Stockton Ancients against Leeds was postponed. Uh, Newcastle United of the fourth tier, knocking out Salford City line Essers of the fifth. Uh, Chorley Bradford postponed. Liverpool Feds of the fourth tier, beating Hull City of the third. Another uh, lower division team knocking out higher division there. Uh, Brickhouse Farsi Celtic postponed. Uh, Burnley narrowly beating Fylde by three goals to two. Uh, Sheffield against Huddersfield postponed. And Long Eaton United against Neverton uh, United abandoned on 80 minutes because of the snow. Uh, Long Eaton United 6 0 up at the time. Uh, now, Neverton United on all their social medias say they're now out of the FA Cup. Uh, Long Eaton haven't put anything out. Uh, but the FA has included Neverton in the third round draw. So, whether the FA says the game's got to be replayed because it wasn't completed, whether Neverton say, well, we were 6-0 down in 80 minutes, that's us done. It kind of remains to be seen on that one. We'll have to, to wait and see and get some official confirmation. Um, but would, uh, as soon as we have it, um, I'll let you know on my uh, on my social media. Of course, recording this at 20 to 10 Tuesday morning. By the time this goes out at six o'clock at night, we might already have that information. So I can only work with what I've got at the moment. Second page, Stoke City against Norwich City postpone. Loughborough Lightning beating Stevenage by two goals to nil. Stourbridge, two goals to one beating Cambridge City. Superb result there. That's the second lower division side knocking out higher uh, so far uh, this second round. West Brom champion four, Lincoln United one. Uh, Line Town against Northampton Town, that all fifth tier tie uh, was unfortunately postponed, as was Wolverhampton Wanderers against Nottingham Forest and Leafield Athletic against Lincoln City. Uh, but Billericay Town, a good 3 0 away victory against Queen's Park Rangers. Uh, Ipswich Town Crawley was postponed. Gillingham against Actonians was abandoned in the 88th minute uh, due to an injury. Uh, Gillingham 2-0 up at the time. Uh, So again, they are both in the draw for the third round. Uh, Ashford Town, probably the result, well, one of the results of the round, uh, a 3-0 victory against Oxford United from two tiers higher. Uh, The third side to uh, beat higher division opposition. Uh, A brilliant result for Ashford Town. Uh, Hashtag United nil, AFC Wimbledon 1. Hounslow of the third tier losing on penalties to Clapton Community Football Club of the seventh tier. As I said, we'll be talking uh, to Sophia from Clapton later on in this show. Superb result for Clapton and great for the FA Cup as well. Uh, Kent Football United, Chesham United postponed. Portsmouth 2, AFC Bournemouth 1. And finally, Eastleigh in the community, nil Exeter City 4 for that page. Uh, and then final page here, uh, Ilmerster Town, nil Southampton 7. Uh, Plymouth Argyle 4, AFC St Austell 2. Uh, Southampton women beating Cheltenham Town 6-5 on penalties after a free all draw. And Bridgewater United 3, Chichester and Selsey nil. So... Some brilliant uh, results here in the second round of the FA Cup. Uh, As I said, three sides uh, being uh, already beating new uh, higher division opposition. Uh, And we have more to come because of the uh, postponements. Now, these games have to be played within seven days of uh, Sunday when it was supposed to be played. So that's this Sunday coming up for the majority of them. Still haven't had confirmation of those, but all those postponements, abandoned games uh, will be played, uh, should be played this Sunday. FA Cup takes priority over everything else, uh, so everything else will move around it. And that will be important to consider 
uh, when we look at the fixtures shortly because uh, it does affect the fixtures that are up on the screen because again we're still waiting for confirmation and things to move around I can only go on the information I've got at the moment but with those results uh, it's time now to chat to our second guest of this week's show Mike Harris the Stourbridge head coach who after knocking out Derby County in the first round now knocked out uh, Cambridge City in the second and I got his reaction to having a home tie against women's championship side Sheffield United in the third round. Yeah delighted um, incredible journey really got a great group um, the staff have worked so hard for, for not just this year for a period of years and you know, a very challenging set of circumstances at times. Just absolutely delighted for the club, for the girls. Great occasion, um, and and with everything that we put in place, you just you just you just could not be happier for for everyone involved, really. So, yeah, really happy. Very 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 good journey. Uh, two very close games. I mean, that Derby one in particular. I remember I was uh, kind of keeping my eye on Twitter whilst uh, whilst at the Forest game, and a spectacular final goal to, to put you through into the second round yeah yeah um, Derby are, are an incredible side got some fantastic players uh, Ellie Gillett and Jade Formiston are just outrageously good at football um, you know the the effort and what the girls produced on that occasion was was phenomenal and, and it's something that you know I know none of us will, will forget for a very long time um, and you know just a great day for the club so many, so many people came to watch as well, which was great. You know, we had a full, full coach of supporters, and just to be able to enjoy it with them afterwards was was great. Um, and like you say, a, a finishing style, um, <laughs> a, 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 a ridiculous moment probably to uh, to sum up a, a great day. I bet, I bet the feeling in the dressing room was great after that, and then again uh, yesterday after after a two one victory as well. Yeah, yeah. No, we've got a great changing room. A lot of good girls. Um, and you know, the the biggest thing about us really as a group is that it's, you know, it's not just the change room, it's the coach afterwards. And then they're in the clubhouse for a few hours when they got back last night too. Imagine a few tired faces in work this morning. But, um, you know, Andy talks a lot about our togetherness and, and about us being a, a good group of people first. Um, and that's really what we are. And I think that the foundation of, of football is being a good person. Um, and, and just having a changing room filled with good people, winning big games is, is, is a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, you've mentioned there, you know, players going back to work. You're now coming up against next week, a side in the championship where the players are you know, making a, a career out of, out of just football. So that's going to be a real test. Yeah, yeah. Complete step into the unknown. Um, you know, we played um, tier three teams multiple times across the last two and a half years that I've been involved in the club, but never have I seen or been involved um, against the championship side. And, you know, they, they, are a, they are a phenomenal side. You know, they beat Villa um, a couple of weeks ago, which tells you probably everything you need to know about them. Um, players like Courtney Sweetman-Kirk obviously was at Liverpool in their time in the WSL too. Um, they've, they've got some phenomenal talent and it's just a great occasion and so exciting to have it at the War Memorial and for for, the, for us as a club to be able to welcome such a, a prestigious club, really. And hopefully the weather will stay away and we'll be able to get the game <laughs> as, uh, as, as planned. But you almost kind of go into the game with nothing to lose, don't you? Because you're not expected in the nicest way to, to get past Sheffield United. But it, it's one of those where you can just enjoy the occasion and, and see if something can come out of this. We have seen in the FA Cup so far this season that teams can lose from several tiers below, four tiers below in in one occasion uh, in the second round. And I know we've got, uh, we're talking to representatives from Clapton later on in the show as well, but it's one of those where you're not expected to do anything. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes it all the more exciting. Um, the girls have huge standards for themselves, so they will want to go in the game um, and cause an upset. And we will absolutely want to put on a great show for, for everybody. And, you know, it was the same conversation that we had before the Derby game really was, no, we don't have anything to lose, but how good, how good would it be to win? 
Um, and, and I think all of our preparation will be to win. Um, we don't we don't ever prep for anything else. The girls don't know anything else. We won't change anything that we do because you know we, our standards are so high week in week out. But um, you know we, we know the task in front of us. Um, you know at the same point we'll we'll enjoy the occasion. But the girls absolutely will be very aware that it's eleven v eleven at the start of the game, and and you know it'll be nil nil, and and we will do what we always do, which is go out and put on a good performance and see what happens. Yeah, and a, a cut run must obviously be really important to you because we've seen uh, in the men's game from a few years ago when Lincoln had that superb run through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and it, it's really kind of set them up past then. And so the prize money isn't anywhere near as it is in the, in the men's game, but it, it must help to have a, have a cup run like this to just help, uh, help the club financially as well. Yeah, we had a really good conversation with the um, the chairman on the bus on the way back yesterday, and he just said, "Look, it's just not about that." Um, Starbridge have a a wonderful history in the FA Cup, um, in in the men's side, and it's just fantastic that that we can replicate that now. And we, you know, they had their third round experience, and now we've got our own, um, and 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 potentially beyond that, um, you know, the financial side. There's there's all sorts of discussion that we could go into and. Um, arguments and debates, but I, I think the big thing for us really is is you know the prestige of the competition and the opportunity to show our show our younger generation of girls coming through that actually this is this is where we plan to be for the years going forward and um, you know whilst we've got a lot to learn on this stage because it's our first opportunity years ago we were talking about our first opportunity to play Wolves or our you know mm. this year we're talking about our first opportunity to play in tier tier three opposition in Derby so. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for us as a club is the, the tradition and what it brings to the club in terms of bringing people to the club and, you know, developing the reputation and, um, and, and just the opportunity to showcase what we do. Yeah, hopefully we'll get uh, a lot of people down. You're going into it on good league form as well. So hopefully, uh, you know, you can be able to carry that forward. Uh, so it will be down at the War Memorial then on uh, December the 19th, a week on, uh, week on Sunday, all being well with the weather. So hopefully you can get uh, lots of people down there just to tell us where they can find information about the club and uh, tickets, presumably it's pay on the gate, is it? And Yeah, so you'll be able to buy, be able to do both on the... Um... You'll be able to purchase before or purchase on the gate. All of the information will be on our Twitter or our Facebook, um, and you'll be able to find it on the club website too, um, including arrangements for the day. So keep your eyes on social media, and we'll be updating with all of the information. Um, hopefully, we'll look forward to welcoming a big crowd down to the game. A huge thank you to Mike for coming on the show and speaking to me. And best of luck to Starbridge for their game against Sheffield United. That's played a week on Sunday, uh, the 12th of uh, December. We'll look at the full draw towards the end of this show. But for now, let's look at the league fixtures uh, in the third and fourth tier that's taking place uh, this coming weekend, December the 5th. Uh, again, these might change ever so slightly. I've put some asterisks against some of them, you'll see. Uh, and new fixtures are kind of popping up all the time as uh, teams discover that they're free and other teams are free and what have you. So as it stands at the moment in the north, Derby County against AFC Fard, a great game towards the top of the table. Derby in first, uh, filed are currently in third place in the Northern Premier Division. And also... Middlesbrough against Burnley. Um, so it could get even tighter at the top if I'll take three points away from Derby. Uh, Middlesbrough against Burnley. Middlesbrough just outside that drop zone in 10th. Burnley middle of the pack on in 6th at the moment. Middlesbrough could climb a place with the victory. Uh, in the Southern Premier Division, again, this is one of these ones uh, that I, I don't seem to put an asterisk against this, but Gillingham, uh, after that game against Actonians, uh, was abandoned in the 88th minute. Uh, if that game needs to be played again, uh, then that fixture obviously won't take place. But Cardiff City against Gillingham, Hounslow against Bridgewater United, Hounslow still looking for their first point of the season, uh, and Plymouth Argyle against London Bees. That's 12th against 9th. In the Division 1 Midlands, uh, we've got Burton Albion against Wem Town and Doncaster Rovers Bells against Peterborough United. 
Uh, League Town taking on Solihull Moors as well. Uh, Burton Almion there, 12th in the table against Wentown, who are 7th. But a win for Burton Almion could see them uh, climb as high as 8th uh, uh, with the victory. So lots for Burton Albion to play for. Doncaster Rovers Bells in second could go top if they beat Peterborough United who are down in 11th and Leak Town against Solly Hall Moors that 6th versus 9th. It is very tight. There's 3 points separate 6th from 10th and 5 points separate 6th from 12th. So plenty of movement can happen in the Division 1 Midlands over the coming weeks when Teams who are still in the Cup action because it's County Cup like the week after the FA Cup and it all gets very messy this time of year. Division 1 North, four games. Annick Town against Newcastle United. That's 12th against second. Tough home fixture for Annick Town who are still yet to get a win this season. Barnsley who are second bottom take on Stockport County in mid-table. Chester Street Town against Durham Sestra. That's 10th versus 8th. Chester Street Town could get themselves out of the relegation zone. And FC United of Manchester against Liverpool Feds. That's sixth against top of the table Liverpool, who are looking to increase that margin. Uh, it's five points at the moment. It could go as high as eight if Newcastle fail uh, to get a point away at Annick Town. Uh, Division 1 South East, these are the games with asterisks on because they're on on the FA Women's National League website. But Stevenage and Norwich City have re uh, well replays to have to play their FA Cup second round fixtures. So it should be Actonians against Stevenage and Cambridge City against Norwich City. But they may well get called off unless those cup games are played in midweek, which is uh, more unlikely than them being played on the Sunday. And finally, Division 1 South West, uh, Maidenhead United against Larkall Athletic, uh, Southampton Women against AFC Bournemouth and Swindon Town take on Buckland Athletic. Maidenhead against Larkall, that's 9th versus 8th. Southampton Women, top of the table at the moment, take on 5th place AFC Bournemouth in the South Coast Derby. And Swindon Town, who are in 7th, take on Buckland Athletic, who desperately need some points to claw themselves out of the relegation zone. Although they have only played five fixtures so far this season and have uh, up to five games in hand on some of the teams in that league. Those are the uh, league fixtures. So let's now have a look at the cup. This is the third round proper draw, still regionalised at this stage. It's the last round of regionalised north and south. Uh, as you can see, uh, it, there's a lot of this team or that team, as, as there often is in the FA Cup. Um, and this is where the women's championship sides come in. As always, the tiers of the sides are um, down the side. If both sides are in the same tier, I've just put the number once. So, Chorley or Bradford City against Newcastle United, an all fourth tier tie. Uh, Norton Stockton Ancients or Leeds United take on Durham from the Championship. Brickhouse Town or Farsi Celtic against Sunderland. Burnley against Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool Feds against Blackburn Rovers. And Sheffield or Huddersfield Town take on Loughborough Lightning. Leafield Athletic or Lincoln City against Lye Town or Northampton Town. Stoke City or Norwich City against Wolverhampton Wanderers or Nottingham Forest. West Bromwich Albion against Long Eaton United or Neverton United. Uh, Stourbridge against Sheffield United. That free tier difference there that Mike Harris was so looking forward to. Uh, Watford against Coventry United. An all-championship affair there. And finally, Gillingham or Actonians against Charlton Athletic on page two. Page three, Ashford Town against London City Lionesses. The reward for that 3-0 victory against Oxford is a home tie against London City of the Championship. Uh, another all-championship fair, Bristol City against Lewis. Uh, Bridgewater United against Crystal Palace. Uh, Plymouth Argyle against Clapton Community. That's a 500-mile round trip for Clapton Community. Uh, Kent Football United or Cheshire United against Billericay Town. Portsmouth against Southampton. Southampton Women against Exeter City. And AFC Wimbledon or Ipswich Town take on Crawley Wasps. Now, as I said, there's a lot of awe and what have you to uh, take into account from this. But a few things that are brilliant about this FA Cup draw is firstly, we've got some all-championship uh, ties. 
uh, which means there's going to be even more from the National League or below uh, that are going to be in the fourth round, which is where the Super League sides come in. If we have a look uh, just uh, briefly at this third page, I will go backwards as well. Southampton women against Exeter City. That's a fourth tier side guaranteed in the fourth round. Kent Football or Chesham versus Billy Ricky Town, another fourth tier side, definitely in the second round. If we just jump back a page, uh, we've got uh, their uh, Leafield Athletic or Lincoln City against Lytown or Northampton Town, another fourth tier side or fifth tier side guaranteed to be in the fourth round. Chorley um, or Bradford against Newcastle United, there again. Uh, and that does it. So there'll be four fourth tier or below sides in the fourth round of the FA Cup, which for the FA Cup is just brilliant. And hopefully, I know everyone kind of wants winnable ties, but I'm sure those fourth tier sides that do get through, maybe even a fifth tier side as well, really be hoping for one of the big ones. And as uh, we'll hear uh, shortly uh, from Clapton, they are already, as much as they're going to try not to, they're already dreaming about maybe having a Super League uh, side uh, going down to Clapton. And uh, I think that's only natural that uh, they start to daydream a little bit. But that will do it for all of the uh, fixtures and the results from the FA Women's National League for this week. So uh, we're now going to have our final guest of this week's show. Uh, I spoke uh, yesterday to Sophia Axelson, who was a goalkeeper with Clapton Community Football Club, uh, and she reflected on another fantastic FA Cup victory for the side. Absolutely. It was uh, magical. I've lost my voice a little bit. <laughs> so I do apologise about that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was another penalty shootout. So you beat Bedford 4-3 on penalties in the first round and then Hounslow 3-1 penalties in the second round. I yeah. mean, you must be quite well practised at penalty shootouts now. Yeah, I think uh, um, most of our players have been going down to the park and, and uh, practice penalties um, in their spare time because it's not something we do at normal training. Yeah, how often, so Clapton being in the seventh tier, how mm -hmm. often are you are you training? Uh, once a week. Once a week. Yeah. During pre season, we, we do two hour, two times a week, but um, now regular season time, we do once a week. Yeah, and you've been rewarded with a very long trip all the way to Plymouth and back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it'll be an interesting day for you, but it'll be a very long day. It will be a very long day, yes. Yeah. So we're just trying now to actually figure out how to get there and um, and the best way, best way to get about it because you don't want to end up rushing to the game and not have mm. enough time to prepare um, and be really tired from, from sitting in a train or a bus for five hours or whatever it will be. So, yeah, um, it will be very interesting. Uh, another tough test, of course, but we will only have tough tests going forward obviously um so yeah but it, we're looking forward to it it's exciting and it's one of those things if it was the men's game with an awful lot of money they'd probably go down and stay in a hotel overnight and, and be well rested which just obviously isn't an option for for the women's teams particularly at your level no not at all i mean we i did just do some quick maths and um Having played the four games that we have played so far in the FA Cup, we've won a total of £2,900. And I think if we were men last round, we would have won 20000 So, you know, it, there's a difference. <laughs> there, there, there is a difference. I know it's something we've spoken about a lot on, on this show and with, with other people as, as well, the, the difference in the monetary value and how... Now you say the the winners of the women's FA Cup get twenty five thousand, and uh, men's first round is is twenty two and a half thousand. It's a big difference. Absolutely, absolutely. I think even the FA, like the trophy of us or whatever, they get five thousand more in the final than the women's elite teams do. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you've already beaten you know two sides, and Hounslow would have was going to, was going to be a really tough test for you. So even though. Plymouth is going to be just as, as difficult to test, if not more so. Must be feeling a little bit confident, believing that you might be able to get something from it. 
I think we're still riding high from yesterday, to be honest with you. Um, if we sat down and analysed um, and really thought about would we be able to beat a tier three team um, if, and we hadn't played one just recently, then we probably would have said, well, this is the end of the line for us. Mm. But we just did beat a, a tier three team. So why not? Yeah, it's it's like I say, you've done it once, you can you can do it again. Exactly, exactly. So, and you know, we we're only getting better with the time with time. So we're quietly confident. And the league form seems to be good this this year as well, the the way it's going at the moment. So as you say, confidence going throughout the uh, the entire camp. Absolutely. Yeah, we've had a great start so far. We're unbeaten in eight. Um, six wins and two draws. Um, one of the draws were, it was just the game after the first FA Cup, and I think we had a bit of an FA Cup hangover in that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but other than that, it's gone really well, and I'm hoping it will continue to do so. And we're looking for promotion and to, uh, into the um, uh, London and Southeast Regions leagues next season. And say a goal difference of 26 as well. Finding the net is certainly not something that uh, that you're struggling with this year. No, we've got some absolutely excellent goal scorers in our in our side. Um, I mean, we've got a star striker in Emily Emily Link who in one game scored six goals. You know, um, she's had quite a few hat tricks this season. We also have some really speedy people on the wing that always beat. You know, for the uh, get to the last ball and or any rebounds. And we also have a free kick expert. You know, we've got plenty of talent in this squad and, you know, it's going well. And, so, and success like that, as you've had, goes right from the players and everybody, the, the coaching staff and everything as well. It's a real team effort. There's no one person that's, that stands out. It, it's all everyone coming together. Absolutely. It's a great combination of players and supporters and managers and everything in between. So. Yeah, and you're uh, so in between. Well, according to the uh, the FA was anyway, in between this and the, the that game against Plymouth, you've got Enfield uh, Town as well coming up uh, yeah. this week. Well, weather permitting, of course. So, I mean, is it going to be difficult to focus on that when you've got such a big game coming up? Or and it's, you've got to try and put it to the back of your mind, but it's going to be difficult to put yeah. it to the back of your mind. <laughs> I mean, I think we're going to give ourselves a little bit of time now at the start of the week to really think about what we've done and what is coming up. But come Thursday in training, it's going to be all about playing Enfield again. Mm. Um, and we've played them once at home this season already. So this is the return fixture and it's going to be great. You know, it's always a, a great day out in Enfield. Yeah, I mean, we, you spoke about that first fixture. It was an 11-0 victory. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, again is it is it difficult to to not get complacent and feel like it's an easy game when you've had we had that scoreline first time around um I think they were very unfortunate in that um in that game actually they had a lot of injuries and players who just left the university so I don't really think maybe it's a true reflection of it and I you know um so, no, I wouldn't say that we'd get complacent. And I think we also do focus a lot on the league. We want to continue to have a good run. So if we want that, we need to really focus on what's coming up as well in the league and not just this FA Cup. This FA Cup, yeah. This FA Cup. <laughs> yeah, as, as much as you can you can dream about how you know further forward you could take it. I mean, you know, you could win this game as you said against a third tier side and you, you've beaten a third tier side already then you could end up with somebody from the Super League as well and it's one of these things you've got to almost stop yourself daydreaming and just and just losing yourself in what might happen but I bet there's some people that have envisaged you know getting a, a tie against a Man City or an Arsenal and then scoring a last minute winner yeah a home game against Arsenal was was spoken about a lot today having <laughs> you know the Arsenal team bus rock up in Walthamstow um and have communal changing rooms, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that that yeah, that is quite a quite a difference. Yeah, you know, you've seen it when it's been on TV before in the men's game, when you've got these huge premiership team sides coming down, they're getting changed in a, essentially a porter cabin in a shed in the corner of the pitch. Exactly. That's kind of what we're thinking about at the moment. Um, otherwise, you know, a, a big 
a big team away is also fun. Um, at least in the next round, we would get some help with the travel from the FA, which, we, which we don't at, the, at this round. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what makes it almost more difficult for you, having the 500 mile round trip and not getting any any help from the FA and having to find it yourself. As you said, you've got the, the money from the, the first round, so you don't use it all on travel if you can help it. No, absolutely not. I mean, if we come away with something from it, I'm sure we will say it'd be worth it. But um, if this is the end of the line for us, then, I mean, I'm, as I said, we're quietly confident that it won't be the end of the line. But should that happen, it, you know, it's not, um, it's not that much fun to have to travel that far for, for that. But Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that uh, I'll certainly be rooting for you and I'm sure almost every other person unless they're from Plymouth will uh, will be root <laughs> who listens to this show will be uh, rooting for you uh, in the next uh, round that's on a week on Sunday on the 12th of December weather permitting and uh, yeah best of luck with it thanks so much Chris a huge thank you to Sophia for talking to me yesterday and also to Mike and Sam for coming on this week's FA Women's National League show. Of course, thank you to you for watching. I'll be back next Tuesday at 6pm. Uh, we'll have, hopefully, if the weather stays uh, right, have the rest of the uh, FA Cup games being played. I'll then be able to give you the third round draw in full ahead of the uh, third round which is taking place next week so plenty of cup action it seems we've had cup every week for the last uh, six or seven weeks now uh, but plenty of cup action to bring you between now and Christmas uh, as always keep supporting your local women's football team if you want to get involved in the show you can leave a comment down below or get in touch with me on Twitter at Chris underscore Gadsby as always keep yourselves safe particularly as we head into winter and the conditions are getting very icy but if you can keep supporting your local women's team please do so thank you very much for watching and goodbye <laughs>